much like uh, Patrick, the comedian we had, this is uh, a second appearance on the stage for our next guest who uh, frequents the Miramar quite often for the last couple of years. He's been helping facilitate the Tuesday open mics here. So if y'all got a special talent or skill, you just got screaming, you want a chance to express it, you can come out on this wonderful stage. If you do something in the realms of music, you walk home with a CD of yourself that night, so it's a really awesome opportunity. Uh, I think Sandy, the lady who runs the shows in the house tonight as well. So a uh, big round of applause for her. She's keeping this going. How many years now? Quite a few years ago. And you're more, you know, a community resource. But, uh, so you ought to check him out more there, but he's making his way around the town. He's kind of Milwaukee's up and coming superstar of poetry. Y'all give a yeah. love, please, for KJ Prodigy. As well as his musical accompaniment to the evening. Lotus Funk. Sorry, Miss Lotus Funk. Hey, what's up, you guys? Make some noise for being here. Make the loudest sound you can make. One, two, three. There we go. I got my lovely guest, Lotus Funk. Make some noise for her. So, um, as the music in the background, hope you guys to pay attention uh, to the words. This is for all the uh, lovely women in the audience. Yeah. yeah. Make some noise for your woman. Yeah. This first poem is entitled, Lavender Letter. I woke up to you on a sweet, rainy Saturday morning. Our babies were still sleeping in the cradle of the future. Rain was leaving silver streaks of celestial white wine down our apartment's lattice. The student tabidologist woke up to rinse precipitation for days. We weren't dazed by the bipolar Wisconsin weather. We plucked the feather from the wingless phoenix of that day, dipped it in Shakespeare's jaw of ink, and wrote a new chapter in our thriving lives. The sound of the rain was Mother Earth's rotating fingertips on our temple, sacred whispers unheard by human ears, but listen to us by our imaginations. It was the sound of Bob Marley and Jimmy Guitar strings passionately welding like a lotus flower in an Egyptian wind. We were a blue oasis by the Nile River. I bet outside there was the smell of marijuana and white girls' perfume. Bob and Jimmy would have liked it that way. We refused to let that day go a bust like the head and shoulders of the devil. I remember you running back into the bedroom. At the light bulb came on top of your head. I snapped my fingers. Five minutes had passed. You came back out dressed in a fire of roses. You'd mummified your voluptuous body in red silk. I was wondering how much blood God did sacrifice from his wrist to make such a dress. I sifted through milk crates of old records to find some music to fit the moment. Close. 
closer than skin on one love seat above the cafe crunching our heads watching a spongebob marathon i don't know what you look like yet if you're asian i'll write you a japanese haiku on special occasions if you're white I'll make sure to bring lots of suntan lotion when we have picnics. <laughs> if you're Mexican, I'll tell you I love the way you wrote your R's and call you an Aztec queen. If you're black, I'll give you weed money. <laughs> Only at the beginning of the month, though. I hope to one day see this poem in a lavender envelope. Make some noise! Are you guys ready for another poem? So, uh, yesterday was my friend Sandy Whitestow's birthday. Make some noise for Sandy! She's like sitting right there in the dark where I can't see her. Can y'all say happy birthday to Sandy? I wrote this poem uh, a couple of years ago, ended up high school and stuff, and uh, I mentioned Sandy in a poem, so this is dedicated to my, one of my best friends, Sandy. Uh, this is for a lovely city that we live in, Milwaukee. This poem is entitled, Paris of the Midwest. <laughs> of a finished poem caressed his pages for 72 hours. It was mental torture as emerald serpent mornings boba constricted around those purple phoenix nights. Those abstract colored beasts were the symbolism of my time of day. I was wonder-lusted. My lust to wonder was lavender vest the naked lights I saw when I closed my eyes. I wandered downtown and climbed to the top of the U.S. Bank building. Feet dangling, the sky was a purplish blue quilt on my shoulders. The moon wore a big Wisconsin cheese smile. I could see the whole entire city from that height. Probably even as far as Lambeau Field. If I had my glasses. I sat, I wrote, I scribbled, I ripped pages out of writer's block syndrome. A perpetual headache dropped. It felt like an anvil was dropped on my head. It slowly went away when they seldom felt you breathe. I let sights of the city take my breath away. I saw an inundation of cars on Wisconsin Avenue, the epitome of New York's Times Square streets. Blacks and Germans were leaving out the east side, pubs, taverns, and eateries, intoxicated and standing cross-legged. St. Patrick's Day is the greatest night to binge. Budweiser, and Blacks, Miller, Blue Ribbon, Heineken, Golden Round, and Bubbly in their cups. I saw bikers in their black polyester tights cycling down the Oakley Trail. A single white light flashing in front of their rear wheels. Beach goers in flimsy bikinis and Hawaiian swim shorts at the North Point Pub. Rear seated on outside umbrella tables, slicing their tongues down rows and custard on a cone. I saw Oakland Avenue. Thrift store hippies were coming out the Goodwill. The thin aroma of artificial cheese pizza from the living seeds. The smell of brilliantly cooked and seasoned lamb meat was coming out the Oakley Euros restaurant. I heard talented guitarists and ambitious slam poets doing their thing in the Myanmar theater. But the nature's daughter, Sandy, flashed the light, signifying the start of a new performance. Blitz the performance game to get a CD out your recording $2 cost. Nostalgia, I gain. When I saw the past four years of my life, embodied in one building, Riverside High, unwritten memories, two-faced faces of so-called friends. The days are from 341 and 317, Mr. Mocha Poetry Club days, gives me mental tears. I ask God for a panacea because I am allergic to nostalgia. It literally takes my breath away. I had breathed once more when I looked at my beautiful downtown home city lights. I can honestly say, Cream City, you are the Paris of the Midwest. 
If your arts nemesis Chicago has something to say about, call up some Packers fans to TV it's Sears of, I mean, Willis Towers with rolls of cheese. I'll take your cheese curds over a shout town style hot dog any day. Your smooth selling market interchange gripping Harleys give you more Motown than the Motor City of Detroit. Hear me for its trucks are mediocre to your motorcycles. You put the slam in my poetry. You put the slam in this poem. I feel like I'm in Milwaukee when I walk your streets. I love you, Milwaukee. Make some noise. <laughs> Thanks for having me back, Pinky. Say, give it up for Lotus.